So we're here at the Qualcomm booth and uh, this is a Snapdragon 820 in a real phone. And the first time uh, it's been shown. That's right, this is the first commercial product that is in Snapdragon 820. We announced the uh, the processor. So it's a Le Max Pro. This is the, uh, yeah, the LETV Le Max Pro. And it has Snapdragon 820 in it. It also has our Sense ID ultrasonic fingerprint, and it's the first for that as well. How does it work, the ultrasonic? So the ultrasonic fingerprint, it has uh, two piezoelectric layers, uh, send and receive, and, and it vibrates at ultra-high frequencies, so it's beyond uh, beyond human or even animal hearing. And, and it vibrates like, a, like you would expect with a medical ultrasound. It uh, creates a, a, a sonic image of your fingerprint. And it's not susceptible to moisture or other types of interference like you would typically have with capacitive. So, it's a so Le TV is the first uh, company to show it off, and uh, uh, how soon is it available on the market? I have not seen a, uh, a launch date for, for this device. You follow up with LETV, they have the device being shown off in their booth for that. Uh, but they, have, they are showing off, the. they've announced it at CES, they've, they've, they've launched it here, they have it available for people to hold and see and touch, and that would be your first commercial experience with the Snapdragon 820 processor. So uh, Qualcomm uh, has a very good experience in being a lot of flagship phones from lots of different brands, and the 820 is definitely going to be a big, big thing in 2016. Absolutely. Uh, we expect a, a large number of flagship devices all over the world to be using the Snapdragon 820, and we're really excited to see what people are doing with it. So are you showing some of the stuff that, uh, that it can do here at the booth? Absolutely. All, all, over, all, over all over the booth we have uh, Snapdragon 820 built into our reference designs, and we're showing uh, high-end graphics, virtual reality, new display technologies, yeah. and, uh, and just demonstrating our, our leadership and performance. So what kind of demos here is, are the coolest ones to check to so, try off? So we're showing a variety of graphics demos where, where we're just showcasing these are these are real time uh, renderings. These are not uh, these are not pre recorded and these are not videos or photographs. So it's uh, so it's ultra high realism and then and then we also have audio technologies here where we're using the Snapdragon processor to process audio and we can in this case, we're showing speaker protection, in which we can get a lot more out of your uh, your small speakers on tablets and smartphones than you would be able to without the Snapdragon. So, uh, with the Adreno 5 530, there's a lot of new things going on also, right? Yeah, the Adreno 530 is a leading processor for the graphics processing, and uh, and it's extremely high performance, and that's part of why we're showing both the realistic immersive graphics and the virtual reality. It's, it's the type of processor that'll give you the high performance and low latency and high resolution that you would need for virtual reality experience. So right here, there's some uh, virtual reality going on. Oh, sorry. It, it's, it's actually inside. It's inside the VR headset? That's right. We've, we've built our reference design smartphone into the VR headset, sort of like a, a Google Cardboard type solution, and it's just a prototype to show the performance of our processor in that what, context. What kind of other things are you showing in your booth? Other things that we're showing in the booth? Uh, so Qualcomm, Qualcomm is uh, a leader in, in, in not just the uh, mobile applications processor, but also in connectivity. We have our I o IoT wall, our Internet of Things wall up here, in which we're showing connected devices of all sorts. Uh, yeah. we, have, we have headphones, home speakers, gaming, uh, gaming controllers, light, light, uh, light bulbs, wow. televisions. There's also the 820 for 3D 820. scanning. 820, we're doing 3D we're doing reconstruction, so we have a structured light scanner, and we're scanning people in real time. Uh, and then, and then putting putting that graphic into a, uh, really? into a mobile game. How do, how does that work? So it's a just with one tablet. One tablet, but we have a structured light scanner. Yes, yeah, so we have a, a structured light scanner on the back. So we have uh, a laser grid that gets projected, uh, an IR uh, camera. IR camera that that reads that grid and determines the depth of objects within it, and then a regular RGB camera which then overlays the color and texture. Is this Tango? It's not Tango. It's not Tango. No. But uh, Qualcomm is ready for Tango, right? I think did yeah. they announced recently. Yeah, yeah we had we, one of one of the Tango references design reference designs has been has been uh, built with with the Snapdragon processor in there. Which is actually completely awesome. Uh, this kind of stuff is going to change everything, right? Absolutely. This is this is the this is where we're starting to bridge the gap between uh, between our, our real world and the virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, this is this is getting objects and people and things How long out time? of the real world and into the virtual. World. How long time does it take to do a scan like this? These scans take about uh, two to three minutes, just to, just to walk around the person and scan them, and then do the rendering and everything cool. in there. Yeah. So let's look around more. Okay. So what do you have over here? 
So over here we're showing uh, uh, basically all of these devices here have our multi-user MIMO or our uh, MU, MUEFX uh, multi-user MIMO technology. It's high performance Wi-Fi over 802.11ac. It's basically you can have uh, dedicated channels for multiple devices running off of the same router. So instead of doing time sharing on the router, you have everything working simultaneously. It's much higher performance. Yeah. Here we have uh, Windows 10 devices. And we're showing the Windows Continuum demonstration here, in which you can use the smartphone as your computer using a full uh, keyboard and, and laptop, just plugging into the dock. So any HDMI, any HDMI display. This feels like a desktop. That's the idea. This is a big deal for our Qualcomm, right? Do you want to be uh, powering the future of desktop through the phone? Absolutely. As, 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 the, as the smartphone becomes more and more powerful, the need for, for multiple uh, computing devices in your life diminishes. So what kind of uh, Windows devices are you showing? Uh, there's uh, all kinds of brands here. Yeah, so we have all, all kinds this of brands. Free some, of these, some of these are from, uh, mm -hmm. from commercial manufacturers, and some of them are from ODMs uh, that, that manufacture devices under various brands. <laughs> some of these are, these are in various markets around the world. Uh, and then the, the one that we're running Continuum off of here is the Lumia, is the Lumia 950 and 950XL. So it is uh, it's running on 210, 410, 617. Oh, kinds of chips going on here. And uh, here's also 210 Foxda. Are you talking? Are you talking about the prices for some of these? It can be really affordable, right? Yeah, no. These any anything in the in the Snapdragon 200 tier uh, will be uh, will be a uh, uh, like mass market, basis. very affordable phone. These frequently are, are sold, sold uh, in, in China and European markets at very, very low cost. So Microsoft is really, really uh, excited to work with Qualcomm on this, this kind of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're both, both sides of that partnership, we're very excited to be working together. They use our Snapdragon processors in their specs for the Windows 10 devices. And, uh, and we do everything we can to work with them to optimize the experience on Snapdragon processors. This is a whole new generation for Microsoft. Absolutely. The Windows stuff. Windows 10, getting that consistent look and feel and compatibility across the various mobile and PC platforms, that's a big step forward and we're really excited to be part of it. Big. And what are you showing here? The multi-gigabit Wi-Fi 802.11ad. Is this the first, are you the first in the world to show this stuff? Uh, as far as... Uh, so this is 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, the spec has been around for for a little while, and we're we're uh, we're in a leadership position in terms of actually commercializing this technology. Actually, the LE this is the same LETV phone that we looked yeah. at at the beginning. This supports the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and uh, and that's uh, 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's Normally, Wi-Fi is a different place in the spectrum, right? Yeah, normally, normally you're talking about 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. 60 gigahertz, uh, it allows for a much higher data rate to go through, and that's why we talk about multi-gigabit technology, and it's about 10, 6 to 10 times faster than what you would expect on regular so 11 So this AC is the Wi -Fi. first phone to get it, and soon there'll yep. be routers getting it too? Yep, there'll be routers and, and phones and other, other connected devices where you have wherever ultra-low latency and high data transfer rates are required, 11AD is going to be an excellent solution for that. Is it better with the uh, interference in uh, trade shows and stuff? Or? It's actually, it's uh, somewhat coincidental to the technology, but because there are so few, there are so yeah. few devices with the 60 gigahertz at the time, there's not a lot of interference for that. Whereas right now we're flooded with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz in the, in this uh, in this context. And in this area, you're showing, uh, this, is this? Some of our ventures partnerships. So Qualcomm Ventures, we, we put a lot of investment into the ecosystem and make sure that there is constant uh, constant innovation going on, both within our company and then outside through our investment. What are we looking at here? Hi, can you talk about this? Absolutely. What is this? Uh, this is the Matterport Pro camera. It's a camera that captures not only full 360 imagery, but also depth data. 360? How? It ah, rotates. It, it rotates. It actually is motorized. It takes about 30 seconds to go around as it does a scan. The nice thing about it is after you've done one scan, you can just pick up, move the entire camera, do another scan. Our software automatically stitches it all together. Nice. As it stitches it together, um, once everything is put together, you upload it to our server and you actually get a virtual walkthrough. So Whoa. you can actually walk through the environment. So this is just a scan we did a little bit this morning of our booth. Is this compatible with Street View? Or is it even no, no, better no. than Street this View? This actually goes much further than Street View. So Street View is a very nice thing, but all it does is use 360 data. Ours actually does full depth data, so you actually get the 3D model at the end of it as well. Whoa. So not only do you have those nice panoramic images, you actually have the 3D model, which you can actually use then. 
to uh, do various things, uh, download it, what have you. It causes uh, nicer transitions. Are you shipping this already or is it just a prototype? No, no, no. This is already commercially available. It's been available for about a year and a half now. You can order it on our website, matterport.com. How much does uh, it cost? It's 4500 for the camera. Uh, it ships usually within 48 hours of order. No, 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 no. Uh, within 48 hours of order. So why did it point down and up? It's so that it can capture data both uh, both high and low, so it gets the ceiling and floor. And what's the algorithm to stitch it together? Uh, that's, that's all yours? proprietary code that we created ourselves. Um, it does all alignment to itself, so each scan point uh, makes the scan a little bit nicer. Is it uh, processed on a Qualcomm inside? or The camera itself is not using Qualcomm. Qualcomm is one of our investors, um, but we are an independent company. We are demoing um, VR. We have the ability to take the uh, showcase app and put it onto virtual reality. And those are running on Qualcomm phones. Nice. So give so, me just a second. This oh. is this is awesome, awesome stuff. So 2016 is going to be an exciting year with uh, innovation happening. Absolutely. And Qualcomm is. Uh, uh, we're very excited about 2016 for Qualcomm. We're taking we're taking not just the next big step in mobile processing with the Snapdragon 820, but we're going in a number of new directions, like with the Internet of Things, and also with automotive. We're doing a lot of a lot of new things, and we're taking those industries forward. All right. In automotive, uh, what's the role of Qualcomm today, and what's going to be in the future? So are you today, a big player already? Yeah, today, today, what we're showing. We have we have a, an Audi vehicle over here that has our infotainment, okay. our, our Snapdragon processor powering the infotainment system. So what we do with the Snapdragon for automotive is uh, is we we take one of our mobile chips and we rework it. We make it extra durable. We add redundancy in the circuits and we make it automotive grade. It can handle higher and lower temperatures and is super reliable. And you you announced the uh, 820A, right? 820A was announced uh, this CES. This vehicle here is uh, is using the 602A. 602A is what is coming out in production vehicles in the 2017 model year, so later this year. 820A is uh, just getting into that three to five year automotive production time frame. And so three to five years from now, probably the 2020 model year is when you'll see the 820A come out. And that's where you have a huge jump forward in terms of the capabilities for advanced driver assistance and autonomous navigation powered by our process. And you, you showed something awesome, like uh, some kind of module so people can perhaps upgrade their modules in the future. Yeah, so we have, what we have is it's a, a modular uh, capsule, as, as it is, with a, with a special connector on it, so that over time we can we can have future-proofed vehicles. So you don't want a, a vehicle with an infotainment system that becomes uh, it goes from being an asset when you first bought it to being a liability and distraction over time as things evolve. Because Qualcomm innovation happens too fast for the car to keep up. Well, well, so you you want yeah, to you want to get the new chips that come out I mean, of here. If you think if you think even when I just mentioned that three to five years is the development cycle for a vehicle, if you think about the cell phones we were using three to five years ago, they seem ancient, they're outdated and, and archaic in their interface. So be, we, we both support over-the-air over yeah. software updates for some of those upgrades, but over time we expect more performance out of our processors and that's where we have the module that contains the Snapdragon 820A and that it can be popped out and popped back in by a dealer or, uh, or whatever the business model ends up being and it can easily upgrade so that you can maintain a high performance and relevant vehicle without your uh, infotainment system and, nice. and dashboard being a, a nice. liability. So hopefully everybody takes it as kind of like a standard. It'd be nice if it was a standard. Yeah, well, so actually you could yeah. actually just put a module in a new car and it doesn't have to be only Qualcomm. Maybe everybody should work in the same slot system. No, it should always be Qualcomm. Okay, it should. Okay. <laughs> but uh, here, just to show you, 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 you basically in all the Android Wear, you have very stable Android Wear uh, yeah, support. Android Wear, they, they tend to use our Snapdragon 400 processor. <laughs> okay. That was the original, that yeah. was the original processor that Google designed the spec around for Android Wear. And we also have a number of other wearables that are not necessarily a full applications processor, but use our connectivity. Uh, similar yeah. type processors and chips to what you would have in the IoT devices. Uh, these would offer some some basic processing and and a lot of connectivity at very low power and, uh, and highly efficient. And uh, there's some uh, glass product right here. It's using uh, yeah, Snapdragon, Snapdragon 805. 805. So full smartphone processor built into those glasses for augmented reality purposes. Cool. So uh, that's awesome. So thanks a lot for the tour and uh, looking forward to more. All right. Great.